Sinabi ni Pangulong Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. noong Huwebes na ang paghihiwalay ng Mindanao sa Pilipinas ay isang matinding paglabag sa isang libo, siyam na daan at walumput pito konstitusyon. Sa pagsasalita sa obserbasyon ng Araw ng Saligang Batas 2024 sa Makati City, sinabi ni Marcos na ang panawagan na paghiwalayin ang Mindanao ay napahamak na mabigo dahil ito ay nakaangkla sa maling saligan. Ang hinalinhan niya, si dating Pangulong Rodrigo Duterte, ang nagpalutang ng ideya na ihiwalay ang Mindanao sa bansa sa pamamagitan ng proseso batay sa pangangalap ng mga lagda. Sa kanyang talumpati, sinabi ni Marcos na ang panawagan ni Duterte ay hindi nakahanay sa bagong Pilipinas, New Philippines, brand of governance na binubuo ng administrasyon ng Pangulo. Bagkus ito ay pagwasak sa ating bansang Pilipinas. The Constitution calls for a united undivided country. It calls for eternal cohesion. Dahil dito, hindi tulad sa ibang konstitusyon, walang anumang bagay sa atin na nagpapahintulot sa pagkasira ng union na ito, tulad ng exit provision. Sa kabaligtaran, hindi kinikilala ng konstitusyon ang karapatang magrebelde. Nangako si Marcos na hindi mababawasan ang teritoryo ng bansa, kahit isang pulgadang kwadrado. We will continue to defend from any threats, external and internal. Panoorin at pakinggan po natin ang kanyang buong mensahe ukol dito. Phil Consa Chairman and uh, Retired Chief Justice, uh, Chief Justice uh, Reynato Puno, Manila Overseas Press Club Chairman Tony Lopez, the uh, Excellencies of the Diplomatic Corps, members of the Cabinet present here tonight, all the members of uh, the Phil Consa, members of the Manila Overseas Press Club, and of course, uh, to be complete, My gratitude goes to the Philippine Constitution Association for its very kind invitation. The commemoration of the Constitution Day this year comes at such a, with such propitious timing. Certainly, it is known to everyone here that constitutional issues have recently been brought to the fore, which bear tremendous impact on our national consciousness. I will not stand idly by, but rather will proactively confront these issues head on. For it is my sworn duty as elected president to preserve and defend the Constitution, and also to ensure that laws, especially the fundamental law of the land, are faithfully executed. Moreover, as Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces and having control and supervision over our police forces, I bear the paramount mandates of maintaining peace and order in our land and in preserving our national territory and security. But these heavy responsibilities are not mine alone. The other great branches derive their authority and mandate from the Constitution, of which the judiciary stands as a final bulwark. Our armed forces and police are equally under oath to defend our republic and our constitutional order. As citizens, we all have sworn to defend our country and its most cherished ideas. Lahat tayo ay nanumpa sa watawat ng Pilipinas at sa bansang kanyang sinasagisa. Nanumpa rin tayo na ating tutuparin ang mga tungkulin ng, mamamay ng mamamayang makabayan. As members of Phil Consa, you have distinctly sworn to defend, protect, and preserve the Constitution. You also vow to propagate and promote obedience to the Constitution as an integral part of the people's adherence to law and order. My, prepared, my predecessor has once declared before this august body that the Constitution is our unifying factor. 
painstakingly, our progenitors have made this pact for us to be one and united. Once we start to destroy the Constitution, there will be a breakage in our society. So it must be. So we must also honor our work. Let us not betray the sacred oath that we have made. We must safeguard our Constitution's primacy and adhere to its provisions, procedures, and precepts. As citizens, we have inherited and assumed these for the sake of the continuity of our nation's legacy. We must then faithfully and vigilantly perform these integral civic duties of ours, lest we lay to waste the great vision and sacrifices of our heroes and our forefathers. The new call for a separate Mindanao is doomed to fail, for it is anchored on a false premise, not to mention a sheer constitutional travesty. The current leadership of BARM itself has repudiated this preposterous proposal, and so did the other political leaders of Mindanao. Because because this is because there can be, as in fact there is already, genuine and effective local autonomy throughout our country, especially in the Barm, without compromising our national integrity in the slightest degree. I strongly appeal to all concerned to stop this call for a separate Mindanao. It is a grave violation of the Constitution. Hindi ito ang bagong Pilipinas na, at, na ating hinuhubog. Bagkus, ito ay pagwasak mismo sa ating bansang Pilipinas. Our constitution calls for a united, undivided country. It, it calls for eternal cohesion. For this reason, unlike other constitutions, there is nothing in ours that allows the breaking up of this union, such as an exit provision. On the contrary, our Constitution does not recognize a right to rebellion while our criminal laws punish it. Government has sternly enforced these laws to the letter and spirit, and this administration will be no exception. I have said it before, and I will say it again here. Our national territory will not be diminished, even by one square inch. We will continue to defend it against any and all threats, external and internal. We will not allow even an iota of a suggestion of its breaking apart. On this part of the Constitution, there is simply no dynamism or flexibility. This is my guarantee, not only throughout this term, but up to my dying breath. <laughs> Fittingly, as I said two weeks ago during the 125th anniversary of the establishment of the First Republic, a divided republic cannot prosper. It was unity that made us rise from our pandemic challenges, and under the banner of the rule of law and supremacy of our constitution, our unity, both of our people and of our territorial domain, will continue to fuel our ascent and the further pursuit of our collective goals and aspirations as a nation. We must then galvanize our people and rally them to preserve the Republic and everything that our flag symbolizes, its three stars and its sun. Wag natin talikuran ang ating panata. Wag natin payagang mabaliwala ang lahat ng mga pinaglaban ng ating mga ninunot mga bayani. Our country's economic well-being is a distinctly important, important concern. Many sectors of society, particularly business, have pointed to certain economic provisions in the Constitution that inhibit our growth momentum. Anchored on these restricted provisions, there are laws that prohibit certain kinds of foreign investment and thus limit our economic potential and our global competitiveness. That is why, since the 8th Congress, there have been no less than 300 measures filed in the House of Representatives calling for the amendment of these economic provisions of our Constitution. And we must allow this healthy and democratic debate to rage on, engaging and informing the minds of our citizens. 
especially since the socio-economic development of our country is directly involved. I will neither hinder this dialogue nor encroach on the prerogatives of Congress and the sovereign will of the Filipino people. Our bicameral Congress and our built-in system of checks and balances are wonders to behold. We must allow our democratic institutions and their mechanisms made, made possible by our constitutional order to take their natural course. I want to make it clear, this administration's position in, in, in introducing reforms to our constitution extend to economic matters alone, or those strategically aimed or those strategically aimed at boosting our country's economy. Nothing more. In any event, this administration, in any event, this administration is going to push hard to attract more foreign investments to significantly help us achieve our ambition of, of upper-middle-class status by 2025. Despite nearly 16% decrement in our net foreign direct investment inflows, our economy continues to grow and is expected to grow further by between 65 to 7.5% in this year, 2024. Over the decades, over the decades, Filconsa has stood witness to two constitutional changes and countless constitutional issues. Dutifully, you have proven yourself to be a proactive witness and defender of our constitutions, past and present. It is once again being called upon for its role as a constitution vanguard. So I call for you, join me, your president, and your legitimate civilian government at the forefront in defending the sanctity of the constitution, the territorial integrity of our country, and the sovereign will of the Filipino people. Rest assured, as President of our great Republic, I will continue to live up to the recognition that you have bestowed upon me almost a decade ago as a great protector of the Constitution. Mabuhay ang ating saligang batas. Mabuhay ang iisa at nagkakaisang bagong Pilipina. Maraming salamat po at magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat.